Dear friends in Christ, on this most holy night in which our Lord Jesus passed over from death to life, the Church invites her members dispersed throughout the world to linger in vigil and prayer. For this is the Passover of the Lord, in which by virtue of our baptism into his death, into the hope of his resurrection, we celebrate the new life we have received by his mercy, awaiting the time when we may gather again around Christ's holy altar. O God, you have bestowed upon your people the brightness of your light. Sanctify this new fire. And grant that we may so burn with heavenly desires that with pure minds we may attain to the festival of everlasting light through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Christ, yesterday and today, the beginning and the end, Alpha and Omega, his are the times and ages. To him be glory and dominion through all ages of eternity. Amen. Durch seine heiligen Wunden, die leuchten in Herrlichkeit, behüte uns. Und bewahre uns, Christus, der Herr. The light of Christ, praise be to God. The light of Christ. Thanks be to God. The light of Christ. Thanks be to
Rejoice now, heavenly hosts and choirs of angels, and let your trumpet shout salvation for the victory of our mighty King. Rejoice and sing now all the round earth, bright with a glorious splendor, for the darkness has been vanquished by our eternal King. Rejoice and be glad now, Mother Church, and let your holy courts in radiant light resound with the praises of your people. All you who stand near this marvelous and holy flame, pray with me to God the Almighty for the grace to sing the worthy praise of this great light. Through Jesus Christ, his Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with him in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you, and also with you. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is truly right and good, always and everywhere, with our whole heart and mind and voice to praise you, the invisible, almighty and eternal God, and your only begotten Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. For he is the true Paschal Lamb, who at the feast of the Passover paid for us the debt of Adam's sin, and by his blood delivered your faithful people. This is the night when you brought our fathers, the children of Israel, out of the bondage in Egypt, and led them through the Red Sea on dry land. The, this is the night when all who believe in Christ are delivered from the gloom of sin and are restored to grace and holiness of life. This is the night when Christ broke the bonds of death and hell and rose victorious from the grave. How wonderful and beyond our knowing, O God, is your mercy and loving kindness to us, that to redeem a slave you gave us son. How holy is this night when wickedness is put to flight and in sin is washed away. It restores innocence 
to the fallen and joy to those who mourn. It casts out pride and hatred and brings peace and concord. How blessed is this night when earth and heaven are joined and man is reconciled to God. Holy Father, accept our evening sacrifice, the offering of this candle in your honor. May Christ, the morning star, who knows no setting, find our faith, ever burning our love of mercy, and justice ever a fire. He who gives his light to all creation and who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Let us hear the record of God's saving deeds in history. How God saved God's people in ages past. And let us pray that our God will bring each of us to the fullness of redemption. The story of creation. In the beginning, when God created the heavens and the earth, the earth was a formless void, and darkness covered the face of the deep, while a wind from God swept over the face of the waters. Then God said, Let there be light. And there was light. And God saw that the light was good, and God separated the light from the darkness. God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. And there was evening and there was morning, the first day. And God said, let there be a dome in the midst of the waters, and let it separate the waters from the waters. So God made the dome and separated the waters that were under the dome from the waters that were above the dome. And it was so. God called the dome sky. And there was evening. And there was morning. The second day. And God said, Let the waters under the sky be gathered together into one place and let the dry land appear. And it was so. God called the dry land earth, and the waters that were gathered together he called seas. And God saw that it was good. Then God said, Let the earth put forth vegetation, plants yielding seed, and fruit trees of every kind on earth, that bear fruit with the seed in it. And it was so. The earth brought forth vegetation, plants yielding seed of every kind, and trees of every kind bearing fruit with the seed in it. And God saw that it was good. And there was evening and there was morning the third day. 
And God said, let there be lights in the dome of the sky to separate the day from the night. And let them be for signs and for seasons and for days and years. And let them be lights in the dome of the sky to give light upon the earth. And it was so. God made the two great lights, the greater light to rule the day and the lesser light to rule the night, and the stars. God set them in the dome of the sky to give light upon the earth, to rule over the day and over the night, and to separate the light from the darkness. And God saw that it was good, and there was evening and there was morning the fourth day. And God said, let the waters bring forth swarms of living creatures, and let birds fly above the earth across the dome of the sky. So God created the great sea monsters, and every living creature that moves of every kind with which the waters swarm, and every winged bird of every kind. And God saw that it was good. God blessed them, saying, be fruitful and multiply, and fill the waters and the seas, and let birds multiply on the earth. And there was evening and there was morning, the fifth day. And God said, let the earth bring forth living creatures of every kind, cattle and creeping things and wild animals of the earth of every kind. And it was so. God made the wild animals of the earth of every kind and the cattle of every kind and everything that creeps upon the ground of every kind and God saw that it was good. Then God said, let us make humankind in our image according to our likeness and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the birds of the air and over the cattle, and over all the wild animals of the earth, and over every creeping thing that creeps upon the earth. So God created humankind in his image. In the image of God, he created them, male and female, he created them. God blessed them, and God said to them, Be fruitful and multiply, and fill the earth and subdue it, and have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the birds of the air and over every living thing that moves upon the earth. God said, See, I have given you every plant yielding seed that is upon the face of all the earth and every tree with seed in its fruit, and you shall have them for food. And to every beast of the earth and to every bird of the air and to everything that creeps on the earth, Everything that has the breath of life, I have given every green plant for food. And it was so. God saw everything that he had made, and indeed it was very good. And there was evening and there was morning, the sixth day. Thus the heavens and the earth were finished, and all their multitude. And on the seventh day God finished the work that he had done, and he rested on the seventh day from all the work that he had done. So God blessed the seventh day and hallowed it, because on it God rested from all the work that he had done in creation. These are the generations of the heavens and the earth when they were created. We'll say Psalm 36 verses 5 to 10 together. Your love, O Lord, reaches to the heavens, and your faithfulness to the clouds. Your righteousness is like the strong mountains, your justice like the great deep. You save both man and beast, O Lord. How priceless is your love, O God. Your people take refuge under the shadow of your wings. They feast upon the abundance of your house. You give them drink from the river of your delights. 
for with you is the well of life, and in your light we see light. Continue your loving kindness to those who know you, and your favor to those who are true of heart. Let us pray. O God, who wonderfully created and yet more wonderfully restored the dignity of human nature, grant that we may share the divine life of him who humbled himself to share our humanity, your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Israel's deliverance at the Red Sea. As Pharaoh drew near, the Israelites looked back, and there were the Egyptians advancing on them. In great fear, the Israelites cried out to the Lord. They said to Moses, was it because there was no graves in Egypt that you have taken us away to die in the wilderness? What have you done to us, bringing us out of Egypt? Is this not the very thing we told you in Egypt? Let us alone and let us serve the Egyptians. For it would have been better for us to serve the Egyptians than to die in the wilderness. But Moses said to the people, do not be afraid. Stand firm and see the deliverance that the Lord will accomplish for you today. For the Egyptians whom you see today, you shall never see again. The Lord will fight for you, and you have only to keep still. Then the Lord said to Moses, Why do you cry out to me? Tell the Israelites to go forward. But you lift up your staff and stretch out your hand over the sea and divide it, that the Israelites may go into the sea on dry ground. Then I will harden the hearts of the Egyptians so that they will go in after them. And so I will gain glory for myself over Pharaoh and all his army, his chariots and his chariot drivers. And the Egyptians shall know that I am the Lord when I have gained glory for myself over Pharaoh, his chariots and his chariot drivers. The angel of God who was going before the Israelite for army moved and went behind them and the pillar of cloud moved from in front of them and took its place behind them. It came between the army of Egypt and the army of Israel. And so the cloud was there with the darkness, and it lit up the night. One did not come near the other all night. Then Moses stretched out his hand over the sea. The Lord drove the sea back by a strong east wind all night and turned the sea into dry land and the waters were divided. The Israelites went into the sea on dry ground, the waters forming a wall for them on their right and on their left. The Egyptians pursued and went into the sea after them, all of Pharaoh's horses, chariots and chariot drivers. At the morning watch, the Lord in the pillar of fire and cloud looked down upon the Egyptian army and threw the Egyptian army into panic. He clogged their chariot wheels so that they turned with difficulty. The Egyptians said, let us flee from the Israelites for the Lord is fighting for them against Egypt. Then the Lord said to Moses, Stretch out your hand over the sea so that the water may come back upon the Egyptians, upon their chariots and their chariot drivers. So Moses stretched out his hand over the sea, and at dawn the sea returned to its normal depth. As the Egyptians fled before it, the Lord tossed the Egyptians into the sea. The waters returned and covered the chariots and the chariot drivers, the entire army of Pharaoh that had followed them into the sea. Not one of them remained. But the Israelites walked on dry ground through the sea, the waters forming a wall for them on their right and on their left. Thus the Lord saved Israel that day from the Egyptians, and Israel saw the Egyptians dead on the seashore. 
Israel saw the great work that the Lord did against the Egyptians. So people feared the Lord and believed in the Lord and in his servant, Moses. Then the prophet Miriam, Aaron's sister, took a tambourine in her hand, and all the women went out after her with tambourines and with dancing. And Miriam sang to them, Sing to the Lord, for he has triumphed gloriously. Horse and rider he has thrown into the sea. We'll say Canticle, the Song of Moses, based on the book of Exodus together. I will sing to the Lord, for he is lofty and uplifted. The horse and its rider has he hurled into the sea. The Lord is my strength and my refuge. The Lord has become my savior. This is my God and I will praise him, the God of my people, and I will exalt him. The Lord is a mighty warrior, Yahweh is his name. The chariots of Pharaoh and his army has he hurled into the sea. The finest of those who bear armor have been drowned in the Red Sea. The fathomless deep has overwhelmed them. They sank into the depths like a stone. Your right hand, O Lord, is glorious in might. Your right hand, O Lord, has overthrown the enemy. Who can be compared with you, O Lord, among the gods? Who is like you, glorious in holiness, awesome in renown, and worker of wonders? You stretched forth your right hand. The earth swallowed them up. With your constant love, you led the people you redeemed. With your might, you brought them in safety to your holy dwelling. You will bring them in and plant them on the mount of your possession. The resting place you have made for yourself, O Lord, the sanctuary, O Lord, that your hand has established. The Lord shall reign forever and ever. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Let us pray. O God, whose wonderful deeds of old shine forth even to our own day, you once delivered by the power of your mighty arm your chosen people from slavery under Pharaoh, to be a sign for us of the salvation of all nations by the water of baptism. Grant that all the peoples of the earth may be numbered among the offspring of Abraham and rejoice in the inheritance of Israel. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. A new heart and a new spirit. Say to the house of Israel, thus says the Lord of God, I will take you from the nations and gather you from all the countries and bring you into your own land. I will sprinkle clean water upon you and you shall be clean from all your uncleannesses and from all your idols I will cleanse you. A new heart I will give you, and a new spirit I will put within you, and I will remove from your body the heart of stone and give you a heart of flesh. I will put my spirit within you and make you follow my statutes and be careful to observe my ordinances. Then you shall live in the land that I gave to your ancestors, and you shall be my people, and I will be your God. The 
the canticle, the first song of Isaiah. We'll say this together. Surely it is God who saves me. I will trust in him and not be afraid. For the Lord is my stronghold and my sure defense, and he will be my savior. Therefore you shall draw water with rejoicing from the springs of salvation. And on that day you shall say, Give thanks to the Lord and call upon his name. Make his deeds known among the peoples. See that they remember that his name is exalted. Sing the praises of the Lord, for he has done great things. And this is known in all the world. Cry aloud, inhabitants of Zion, ring out your joy. For the great one in the midst of you is the Holy One of Israel. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Let us pray. <coughs> Almighty and everlasting God, who in the Paschal mystery established the new covenant of reconciliation, grant that all who are reborn into the fellowship of Christ's body may show forth in their lives what they profess by their faith. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Alleluia, Christ is risen. The Lord, the Lord is, is risen, risen indeed. indeed. Alleluia. Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. O God, who made this most holy night to shine with the glory of the Lord's resurrection, stir up in your church that spirit of adoption which is given to us in baptism, that we, being renewed both in body and mind, may worship you in sincerity and truth. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Amen.
A reading from Paul's letter to the Romans. Do you not know that all of us who have been baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? Therefore, we have been buried with him by baptism into death, so that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, so we too might walk in the newness of life. For if we have been united with him in the death like his, we will certainly be united with him in the resurrection like his. We know that our old self was crucified with him so that the body of sin might be destroyed and we might no longer be enslaved to sin. For whoever has died is freed from sin. But if we have died with Christ, we believe that we will also live with him. We know that Christ, being raised from the dead, will never die again. Death no longer has dominion over him. The death he died, he died to sin, once for all. But the life he lives, he lives to God. So you also must consider yourselves dead to sin and alive to God in Christ Jesus. This is the word of God. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Glory, Glory to, you, to you, Lord Christ. After the Sabbath, as the first day of the week was dawning, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went to see the tomb. And suddenly there was a great earthquake. For an angel of the Lord, descending from heaven, came and rolled back the stone and sat on it. His appearance was like lightning, and his clothing white as snow. For fear of him, the guards shook and became like dead men. But the angel said to the women, Do not be afraid. I know that you are looking for Jesus, who was crucified. He is not here, for he has been raised, 
as he said, Come, see the place where he lay. Then go quickly and tell his disciples. He has been raised from the dead, and indeed he is going ahead of you to Galilee. There you will see him. This is my message for you. So they left the tomb quickly with fear and great joy and ran to tell his disciples. Suddenly, Jesus met them and said, Greetings! And they came to him, took hold of his feet, and worshipped him. Then Jesus said to them, Do not be afraid. Go and tell my brothers to go to Galilee. There they will see me. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to, you, to you, Lord, Lord Christ. Christ. I speak in the name of the one living God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. This is not my sermon. Um, it's a very old sermon, actually. Um, just rather like my jokes, but this is even older. This is from St. John Chrysostom, one of the saints, one of the fathers of the early church. Um, we have a prayer of his in uh, our prayer book, which we always use uh, at the end of Evensong. Um, and this is a, a sermon that I've read many times before since I've been here in Wiesbaden. Um, at this Easter Vigil, um, if we've had an Easter Vigil service, sometimes also on Easter Day, because it says so much better than anything I can ever do what Easter really is, what Easter means in every year and especially in this year. Are there any who are devout lovers of God? Let them enjoy this beautiful, bright festival. Are there any who are grateful servants? Let them rejoice and enter into the joy of their Lord. Are there any weary with fasting? Let them now receive their wages. If any have toiled from the first hour, let them receive their due reward. If any have come after the third hour, let him with gratitude join in the feast. And he that arrived after the sixth hour, let him not doubt, for he too shall sustain no loss. And if any delayed until the ninth hour, let him not hesitate, but let him come too. And he who arrived only at the eleventh hour, let him not be afraid by reason of his delay. For the Lord is gracious and receives the last even as the first. He gives rest to him that comes at the eleventh hour as well as to him that toiled from the first. To this one he gives and upon another he bestows. He accepts the works as he greets the endeavor the deed he honors and the intention he commends. Let us all enter into the joy of the Lord. First and last alike, receive your reward. Rich and poor, rejoice together. Sober and slothful, celebrate the day. You that have kept the fast and you that have not, rejoice today for the table is richly laden. Feast royally on it. The calf is a fatted one. Let no one go away hungry. Partake all of the cup of faith. Enjoy all the riches of his goodness. Let no one grieve at his poverty, for the universal kingdom has been revealed. Let no one mourn that he has fallen again and again, for forgiveness has risen from the grave. Let no one fear death, for the death of our Savior has set us free. He has destroyed it by enduring it. He destroyed hell when he descended into it. He put it into an uproar even as it tasted of his flesh. Isaiah foretold this when he said, You, O hell, have been troubled by encountering him below. Hell was in an uproar because it was done away with. It was in an uproar because it is mocked. It was in an uproar for it is destroyed. It is in an uproar, for it is annihilated. 
It is in an uproar, for it is now made captive. Hell took a body and discovered God. It took earth and encountered heaven. It took what it saw and was overcome by what it did not see. O death, where is thy sting? O hell, where is thy victory? Christ is risen, and you, O death, are annihilated. Christ is risen, and the evil ones are cast down. Christ is risen, and the angels rejoice. Christ is risen, and life is liberated. Christ is risen, and the tomb is emptied of its dead. For Christ, having risen from the dead, is become the first fruits of those who have fallen asleep. To him be glory and power for ever and ever. Amen. Amen. Please stand. We have no baptisms tonight. We would not be allowed to baptize anybody at this time. But we can still together here in church and you at home renew our baptismal vows. Through the Paschal mystery, dear friends, we are buried with Christ by baptism into his death and raised with him to newness of life. I call upon you, therefore, now that our Lenten observance is ended, to renew the solemn promises and vows of holy baptism by which we once renounce Satan and all his works and promise to serve God faithfully in his holy Catholic Church. Do you affirm your renunciation of evil and renew your commitment to Jesus Christ? I do. Do, do you believe in God the Father? I, I believe, believe in God, God the Father, Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. earth. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of God? I believe, I believe in, in Jesus Christ, Christ his, his only Son, Son our Lord, who was conceived, conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit. Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary, he suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. Do you believe in God, the Holy Spirit? I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Will you continue in the apostles' teaching and fellowship, in the breaking of bread, and in the prayers? I will, with God's help. Will you persevere in resisting evil, and whenever you fall into sin, repent and return to the Lord? I will, with God's help. Will you proclaim by word and example the good news of God in Christ? I will, with God's help. Will you seek and serve Christ in all persons, loving your neighbor as yourself? I will, with God's help. Will you strive for justice and peace among all people and respect the dignity of every human being? I will, with God's help. May Almighty God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has given us a new birth by water and the Holy Spirit, and bestowed upon us the forgiveness of sins, keep us in eternal life by his grace, in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. Amen. On this most holy night, we pray for the church, the earth, the world, those in need, and all the members of God's family, responding to each petition with the words, Hear our prayer. We pray, O oh God, for all the churches around the globe, for their bishops and clergy, for the newly baptized, for the believers who cannot assemble for worship, for faithful endurance during this time of sorrow and distress, and for a deepening sense of your presence among us. O God, you are our temple, 
In your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray, O God, for the well-being of creation, for the health of seas, rivers, lakes, and lands, and for the will to care for your earth. O God, you are our rainbow of promise. In your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray, O God, for peace and justice in the world, for an end to war and international turmoil, for concord in our troubled society, for the heads of state, legislators, and local civic leaders, that they enact wise procedures to deal with the coronavirus and its fallout. O God, you are our mighty fortress. In your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray, O God, for all who are facing the coronavirus, for all who mourn their dead, all who have contracted the virus, those who are quarantined or stranded away from home, those who have lost their employment, those who fear the present and the future. We pray for physicians, nurses, and home health aides, medical researchers, and the World Health Organization. Fill the aching in our hearts with your merciful power. O God, you are our everlasting arms. In your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray, O God, for all in need, for those suffering for the faith, for those who are poor, hungry, and homeless, for those who are sick and those awaiting death, and for those we name before you here. O God, you are the healer of our every ill. In your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray, O God, for the desires of our hearts. O God, you are our heart's desire. In your mercy, hear our prayer. Receive our thanks for all who died in the faith and bring us at the final resurrection into your everlasting life where sorrows will be no more. O God, our beginning and our end, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Into your gracious and mighty hands, O God, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Amen. Amen. Almighty God, who for our redemption gave your only begotten Son to the death of the cross, and by his glorious resurrection delivered us from the power of our enemy, grant us so to die daily to sin, that we may evermore live with him in the joy of his resurrection. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And now, as our Saviour has taught us, we are bold to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. May the God who shakes heaven and earth, whom death could not contain, who lives to disturb and heal us, bless you with power to go forth and proclaim the gospel. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, 
be upon you and those you love and those who need our love and remain with you this day and always. Amen. Alleluia. Christ, our Passover, has been sacrificed for us. Therefore, Therefore let, let us keep, keep the feast. feast. Alleluia. When we share our bread with one another, the Lamb of God will make us one. 